All right. Laura Phillips, I can see you. Can you hear me? All right. We're, we're cooking with gas today, y'all. Epiphany, also known as the 12th night or Three Kings Day, marks the occasion of a time-honored Christian tradition, chalking the doors. We have chalk. After Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, the Holy Family was visited by three magi from the east. They came to worship Christ and bring him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The Feast of Epiphany is celebrated on the 12th day of Christmas, January the 6th. Now, you might check your calendars and realize that it's not the 6th. The Magi asked for directions this time and got there a little bit early. So we're excited to be able to do this on Sunday. The chalking of the doors mm -hmm. is a centuries-old practice throughout the world, though it appears to be somewhat less well-known in the United States. It is, however, an easy tradition to adopt and a great practice whereby we dedicate our year to God from its very outset, asking God's blessing on our homes and in all who live, work, or visit them there. Chalking the door is a way to celebrate and physically mark the occasion of epiphany and God's blessing of our lives and our homes. Let us pray. God shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. O God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the nations and the glory of your people, Bless all who dwell and come to this house of worship. May it be for them a place of peace and health, that we may rejoice in the gifts and graces you have bestowed upon us. Fill us with the light of Christ, that your, our concern for others may reflect your love. Amen. Amen. I got a little carried away. Loving God, bless this chalk which you have created, that it may be helpful to your people, and grant that through the invocation of your most holy name, that we who use it in faith to write upon the door of our home the names of your holy ones, Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar may receive health of body and protection of soul for all who dwell or visit this place of worship through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy Epiphany Sunday, everybody. We're going to get inside now and begin our service.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen the lord be with you let us pray O oh god by the leading of the star you manifested your only son to the peoples of the earth Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you promise us peace that passes all understanding. Give us the courage and the creativity to see your peace as an attainable reality for all the world. As we pause, help us to visualize your peace, an end to violence of thought, word and action, in religion and government and business in our streets, our schools, our churches, our homes and ourselves. Let us pray. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise above upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Epheth and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Our, our, our second reading will be from Psalms. Give the king your justice, O God, and, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the small hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and the moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the moan, the moan field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteousness flourish there shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Teresh 
and of the isles that shall uh, and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. But he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and the poor. He shall persevere the lives, preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that I was given for you, that, that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Greetings of home from the eastern land. Start of 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. But they chose another way. Today we greet the three kings, the three magi, the three wise men, all the same group, not nine different people. We greet them as they make a stop at King Herod's in their quest to follow the star. They arrived at King Herod's believing that if they were following something amazing, something awe-inspiring, something significant, then surely the king would know what was going on. So the king gathers his scribes and his chief priests and asks them to do some research on what is happening in his own backyard. What might this star signify? What might be happening in his own community that would draw three wise men? Even though the wise men have already told the king that they long to see the Christ child, the one that is called King of the Jews, the moment Herod hears this is the moment violence and death are introduced into the story. The scribes found a text in Micah that gave some insight on where this king, on where this king of the Jews might be found. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Herod likes to fancy himself the king of all kings, but no wise men ever came to seek him out. And Herod likes to fancy himself the king of all kings, but nowhere in the scripture is his birth foretold. Herod likes to fancy himself the king of all kings, but no star shone so bright for him. If one could paint Herod a color, it would be both green with envy and red with anger. But Herod devised a plan. 
To the three wise men, he says, go and find this king and then come back here and tell me exactly where he is so that I too can go and pay homage. It sounds good, right? Sounds sincere. And the three wise men agree and they set out again on their quest. Homage for King Herod was going to be anything but, but humility, awe, or surrendering. Mm -mm. Homage for King Herod would reek of death and of murder and humiliating the child to the point of death and ridicule. And that would be complete with his family and the shepherds close by and all the animals. Herod's heart is steeped in fear. Herod's heart is steeped in fear. A mighty king whose only might is ruthlessness, is violence, is rage, and reacts to every slight contradiction, conflict, not with reason or thought, but the swords and crosses. And this mighty lofty king is afraid of anything that doesn't respond the same way he does with fear. His, this mighty king is afraid of a child who embodies everything King Herod never will. True grace, true power, true love, true peace, and hope. The Magi continue to follow the star and they are led to where Jesus is and in their hands they offer gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They presented these to Jesus according to the gospel. These valuable items were standard gifts to honor a king or a deity in the ancient world. Gold as a precious metal, frankincense as perfume or incense, and myrrh as anointing oil. In addition to the honor and status implied by the value of the gifts, scholars think that these three wise men chose these gifts for a special spiritual sim symbolism about Jesus. Gold representing his kingship, frankincense a symbol of his priestly role, and myrrh a prefiguring of his death and embalming. An interpretation made popular in the closing hymn that we'll sing today, We Three Kings. And here's what I find interesting about these gifts. That the wise men didn't stop at a store on the way to pick up these gifts. They brought them with them from the very beginning of their journey. The wise men were privy to some to something. They were privy, privy in some way to the narrative of Jesus's life and how it would play out. And upon their arrival, they lay these gifts at the feet of Jesus, the King, Jesus, the Christ, Jesus, the Messiah. What a sweet child they find. Scholars say that by the time the Kings arrived, that Jesus was more the age of a toddler than a baby. <clears throat> maybe even in his terrible twos. This is important to know because in our tradition, December the 28th is known as the Feast of the Holy Innocents, which marks the time that King Herod ordered all male children aged two and younger to be killed in Bethlehem. Some king, right? Some powerful king. Everybody looks like a nail when your only weapon is a hammer. And everything is a threat when you hold no real power other than manufactured status, chipped with rage and anger, insecurity, fear, and envy. The wise men have come to offer gifts to honor this king, and after arrest, they begin to return to Herod, but they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod. Now these magi take occurrences like dreams and stars and weather events and signs. They take all of these seriously. And the fact that all three of them were warned made the warning even more significant. So they returned to their own homes by another way. 
They chose a different way other than the way of violence. They chose a different way other than the way of harm. They chose a different way other than a way of being a pawn in a little tiny insignificant king's plan. They chose a different way. And friends, our world is in turmoil. Our world is filled with violence, travesties of pain, of longing, of fear not to mention a pandemic. And there's no way around the understanding that the world we live in today is a far cry from the one God dreamed of at the very beginning. And still, God's hope was born to us, given to us to dwell with us in flesh and in blood incarnate. God didn't wait to enter into a perfect world in the form of a child. And God didn't wait until we were ready. God came to bring the peace, the hope, the love, then and still now. God, through Jesus Christ, has been combating fear since he was born unto us. So wherever there is fear, God is already there. Wherever in the world you pray for and whomever you pray for and whatever you pray for, God is already there at work, bringing about peace and dwelling with those whom we pray for. Do not fall into Herod's plan of succumbing to fear the way a little ruthless king does. Fight for hope, fight for peace, fight for the love that was born in the stable. Love with all of your heart and pray for the peace that passes all our understanding and choose a different way, away from fear, away from hopelessness, away from bewilderment. Choose to follow the wise men and allow our hearts to be transformed by the perfect peace of Christ and pray. Pray for our country. Pray for our leadership. Pray for the poverty and racism that has eschewed our systems and our policies. Pray for all countries and their leadership. Pray for all areas affected by man-made and natural disasters. And pray for us as we await this vaccine and help us be in the midst of our impatience both with the waiting for the vaccine and those who choose not to practice safety protocols and keeping the virus at bay. Pray for our world to wake up and become active in our care of creation, to atone for our sins committed against creation, and to honor all of creation with awe, and to offer our gifts of innovative thought, holistic healing, to value the sustenance of life over profiting off of resources. And pray for those whom you need to forgive and seek forgiveness from. Offer the world and the God that created it the gifts God has given you and do so from a place that pays homage to the giver of all good gifts and choose a different way, not of fear, but of love. Amen. Rising as you are able, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishops, Sam and Anne, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the Church of the Ascension Fork Advance, Christ Church Albemarle, and All Souls Ansonville. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, for a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by the divine. I ask your prayers for the departed. At this time, you may offer your prayers of, for the repose of the souls of those that have departed or prayers of intercession or thanksgiving. And please conclude your prayer by saying, this is my prayer. And collectively, we will respond, this is our prayer. So for what shall we pray for today, friends? I pray for my cousin, Lori, in the process of entering God. This is my prayer. This is, this is our prayer. prayer. Our prayer. I would like to pray prayers of thanksgiving for the ministry of Beverly Gosnell as she steps down from the pastoral care committee. We are so grateful for the many ways that us as we as, as a community have had our needs met in our time of need and those in the in the community surrounding St. Anne's. Beverly is a saint among saints. And we are grateful, Beverly, for your presence and your prayer. This is my prayer. This is, this is our, our prayer. prayer. Put under the chair. I'd also like to pray for all seminarians who embark on the rite of passage this week called general ordination exams. You are in our thoughts and our prayers, and this is not an affirmation of your call, but just a hoop you have to jump through. <laughs> this is our prayer. Links. I pray for the links this week and especially tomorrow. This is my prayer. This is, this is our, our prayer. prayer. I pray for the family of my friend who lost her father to COVID and pray for the repose of his soul. His name is Jim Flint. This is our this prayer. Is my this is our prayer. I pray for the soul and the spirit and sweet repose for Thomas Byron Saunders who died yesterday from COVID. This is my prayer. This is we offer up prayers of thanksgiving for Keith and Taylor and for Katerina 
who have all completed their discernment internships, and we welcome Keith and Taylor back to St. Anne's. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our, our prayer. prayer. Our prayer. Give thanks for the birthday of my niece, my Adelaide, who turned one this week. Um, this is my prayer. This is, this our, is our prayer. prayer. Yeah. I pray for my friend Norma, who has lost her house to fire on Christmas Day. Oh. This is my prayer. This is our, this is our prayer. prayer. I pray for my niece, Patricia, who has lost two grandmothers to COVID, whose grandfather has been diagnosed with COVID as well as her mother. Oh. This is my prayer. I ask your prayers for all Winston-Salem Forsyth County School staff who return to work tomorrow, unless they chose vacation time. But all the rest of us will be back in our buildings tomorrow. And I ask for your prayers that the school board uh, enter discernment of a plan that is protective of all. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. Are there any other prayers from the community? I'm gonna invite Taylor to continue our prayers. She can't see the chat. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. We give thanksgiving for the birthdays this week, including Martha Murphy, Dr. Christy Woods, Paige French, and Carolyn Bailey. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, Comfort and relieve your sick servants suffering with COVID-19. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have their confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 O God, you made us in your image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also, and also with you. you. Your word of peace with one another. Peace, peace everyone. God's peace. Taylor, welcome back. Peace. 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 Peace, Jerry. Peace, Carolyn. Peace, John. Peace, Jan and Audra. Mm -hmm.
Before we begin with our communion, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who brought your prayer flags in. And if you still have your prayer flags at home, no worries. You can get them into me whenever you feel it's a it's a right time for you. Uh, we are out of prayer flags at the moment, but I'm going to order a couple more because I've gotten a few requests. 
So I'll have some more available probably this time next week. But these are your prayers for 2021. And we will string your prayers up in our worship space and they will stay there until we are all able to gather again. But for now, I just wanted to pray over them. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for these prayers that our parishioners have put together for the year ahead of us. Lord, you already know what has been written on these prayer flags. Help us as a community to listen to these prayers and reflect your love in the world. Keep us ever mindful that even in the darkest of days that your light is not overcome. And in this season of light, call our hearts to be reflectors of that light in this beautiful and broken world. And I bless these prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may 2021 be a year of healing, of uniting, of wholeness, of health, of joy, and hope. Amen. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory to the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper he, with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, 
awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with Anne and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union, union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As we welcome Mary and Julie to the table, I wanted to let you know that I have consecrated hosts and gluten-free hosts with the hope that on Tuesday, we will hear from Bishop Sam that we can continue to do communion the way we did it for Christmas. Uh, please be on the lookout for an email from me on Tuesday sometime in the late morning to give you more information about that. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen having been fed at this table to go out and feed others, a few announcements. You may have seen it posted on our Facebook page, but we're going to be uh, taking on the 90-day Bible challenge um, starting next Sunday, I think. I need to look at the dates. But anyway, the premise of it is, is that together as a group, 
we will read the entire Bible from start to finish in 90 days. And information about that will be in our announcements this coming Friday. This means that you'll be reading every day, but gathering once a week on Wednesday evenings for us to kind of just talk about the experience. It's way too much to try to do Bible study with, but it's neat to talk about what it's like to read the Bible together. So if you are interested in taking on this challenge, perhaps you're looking for a New Year's resolution, um, this is an excellent invitation for you um, to join me in the 90 day Bible challenge. And also looking ahead, at the end of February, we're going to have a day long uh, Remember Your Baptism retreat that will be helping folks prepare for confirmation, reaffirmation and reception when uh, Bishop Ann comes and visits us on March the 21st. So if you are wanting to be confirmed or perhaps maybe at this point in your journey, you wanna reaffirm your faith or perhaps you were confirmed in a different denomination but would like to be received here into the Episcopal Church, then this is a retreat for you. So discern it in your hearts. If you have any questions, let me know. And that retreat will happen on the last Saturday of February, February the 27th. It'll be on Zoom so that we can all be safe. Some, um, all can, none must, some should, and I commend it to you and your prayers. I think that's all I got. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So let us prepare to sing our concluding
Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yay. And Audra, I enjoyed your singing. <laughs> Look, like you're having fun. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Have a good week, everyone. Thank Thank you. You. Happy, happy birthday, birthday week, Martha. Happy birthday. What was that? Have a happy birthday week. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's exactly. You want to say anything? Happy hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Goodbye and hello. Goodbye and hello. Goodbye and happy new year. Goodbye and happy new year. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Are we having a coffee hour? <laughs> Martha, when is your birthday? Um, it's tomorrow. Oh. Okay. Yep. Well, woo -hoo. Exactly. Good day. <laughs> Thank you. Happy oh, birthday, Martha. HVAC repairs. Yay. 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 <laughs> You're getting the nerds back done. Coffee <laughs> hour. <laughs> Now we want to move on to the uh, to the adult uh, service, and now we enjoy it with mommy. So we'll see how it is. She likes the music a lot. So thanks to all for the wonderful music. Yes, oh, yeah. I know. She's right. <laughs> it's a beautiful music. <laughs>